Hi, my name is Anthony Watson. I'm a prototype architect at AWS, and I'm here today to talk about application development for Backstage IO on AWS. This is chapter six, source control and pipelines. Backstage uses source control systems in two ways. Firstly, when developers create new applications through Backstage, it will create new Git repositories to store the code. Secondly, Backstage is extended and customized by pointing it to Git repos that contain the extension configurations. We chose to use GitLab for version control, since it is a common choice by enterprises and due to its support for CI-CD pipelines, which we will dis discuss later in this video. It's important to note that Backstage can be configured to integrate with multiple Git providers, such as GitHub and Bitbucket. We have set up GitLab to run on an Elastic Compute Cloud machine, also known as an EC2. The EC2 is configured using the community edition of GitLab that is provided on the AWS marketplace. The GitLab service runs in the same private network as Backstage so that Backstage can make calls to GitLab. You may be wondering how Backstage gets authenticated with GitLab. When the GitLab instance is starting up, a token with administrative privileges is saved securely using the AWS Secrets Manager service. Backstage is configured to use the value stored in that secret so that it can create new repositories on GitLab. Here we see a depiction of an application repository that was created by a developer through Backstage. There are a few important things to note about the repo. Firstly, the repo contains both the application code and the configuration for a GitLab CI CD pipeline that is used to build the application. Secondly, the developer can choose a GitLab group to associate with the application repository. In GitLab, groups are used to group related projects together. For example, if there are multiple repositories in the same group and a developer is granted access to that group, the developer will then have access to all repositories within that group. In this diagram, we show a GitLab group called AWS App, but you can configure and use whatever groups make sense for your organization. A final thing to be aware of is that Backstage will create a GitLab repository token that developers can use to access the newly created application repository. This allows developers to get quick access to clone the repo without leaving the Backstage UI. As I mentioned previously, Backstage is configured to pull configurations and extensions from a GitLab repo called Backstage Config. This repo is intended to be maintained by administrators, not developers. It contains things like infrastructure as code templates that provision AWS infrastructure, as well as application templates and settings for AWS environments that can be selected to host applications. The Backstage Config repo is placed into a GitLab group for administrators only. Now let's shift our focus from source control to CI-CD pipelines. Pipelines are a set of steps that we need to run in order to build our application. They are often triggered by source control events, such as when changes are made or merged to a particular branch. The steps needed for a pipeline depend on the type of application being built. For example, if your application runs in a container, your pipeline will need to build the container image and push it to an image repository. In contrast, if your application is serverless and does not use containers, your build process might include staging the built artifacts in an S3 bucket. We provide several different application templates that each work in slightly different ways. You are free to customize the application templates in accordance with your company's standards. For example, you could have your pipelines run unit tests or security scans on your code. To execute a CI-CD pipeline, the GitLab service will delegate to another machine that is configured as what GitLab calls a runner. Since you may have many pipelines running simultaneously, GitLab provides the ability to set up a fleet of runners to spread the load across as many machines as you need. Runners must be registered with GitLab before they can be used. We have set up a single runner that registers itself on startup. When GitLab detects an event that should trigger a pipeline, it will choose a runner and tell it to run the pipeline steps. The runner typically makes use of a container image to run pipelines in a clean and isolated environment. All pipelines start by downloading the application code from GitLab. 
From there, they can download any additional tooling they need before they proceed to execute the pipeline steps. You may be wondering what level of AWS permissions the CI-CD pipeline has. Pipelines utilize an AWS role that is assigned to the GitLab runner EC2 instance. This role has very minimal permissions that only allow it to stage build artifacts to the Elastic Container Repository or S3. For your use cases, you may desire to customize a pipeline so that it can perform deployments. In this case, you can create a new role using the AWS IAM service that has the permissions your pipeline will need and you can update your pipeline to assume that role instead of the default EC2 instance role. For more information on advanced security use cases, see the links provided here. In closing, let's tie all the things we've discussed so far together. Backstage is configured by administrators using files that live in a Backstage config repository. Developers use Backstage to create and deploy new applications based on templates that are stored in the Backstage config repo. A new application repository is created by Backstage to hold the application code as well as the CI-CD pipeline configuration. When developers merge changes into the application repo, GitLab will start a new CI-CD pipeline and delegate its execution to a pre-configured runner instance. The runner will download the source code and build the application. It will then stage the built artifacts into a container image repository or an S3 bucket. Once the build has been staged, developers can click a button on the Backstage UI to deploy the application to AWS. Thank you for watching this video on application development for Backstage IO on AWS.